I think a great example for me in present day would be Marcus Rashford and the other one would be Lewis Hamilton. Well, I can throw a former Manchester United player who's now playing it for Juventus. He sets his own standards. He doesn't ask people to set them for him. It's the same as Marcus, Marcus Rashford. They don't ask you to set the bar. They set their bar and they go for the bar. And if, it, if they need to get higher, they will push that bar. They will push it to the actual. That to me is elite. Everything that he does produces a result. Hi, I'm John Gubber and welcome to my channel. And tonight we're going to be talking about what it means to be an elite athlete. And joining us to discuss this are two elite athletes from the 70s, two soccer stars from the 70s. In fact, in the red corner, we've got my good friend Gordon Hill, an FA Cup winner with Manchester United in 1977. And in the gold corner, another good friend, Mel Eaves, a League Cup winner with Wolverhampton Wanderers back in 1980. And also the last Wolves player to score a winning goal for the Wolves at Old Trafford. I'll start with you, Gordon, and thanks for joining us. Tell me what are your initial thoughts and what it means to be an elite sportsman or woman, of course. Well, I think the first thing I want to do is to say thanks to Mel for for coming because of because of what he's doing now, and it's you know now scientific in in football. Uh, he's now a performance specialist and uh, has the background of of being a former player like myself i'm intrigued by the word that's being used and banded around a lot is the word elite which i think that that it's usually uh, it's loosely used and i'm trying to like work out that word elite 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 so who better but then who better to talk about it there's my good friend mel so mel as we can see in the background you you've got a business that's to do with performance. So you're obviously well qualified to talk about elite sportsmen. Yeah, well, this has come about because I played for 14 years until I had to finish through injury. I've then been on a, what you would call a worldwide quest for about 30 years, looking at how different cultures and different uh, sporting bodies or different people around the world get their their teams or their athletes uh, to perform, how to get results. Because in football, as you can see for here, it's a results business. So, uh, and I've just distilled everything down. And really, there is something called what I call the three E's, because there are three E's in my name, Mel Eves. And this is all down to how to get how we perform and get results is all to do with how we move, how we exercise or move. That's the first E, how you exercise or move. Then what you, the fuel that you put in, what you eat. So eat is, is the second one. And the third one, which is the the really th defining thing at what I call the elite level is emotional intelligence controlling your emotions under pressure which put those all together you get a fourth e which is more energy but when we come to saying whether somebody is elite or that's an elite squad it's all down to semantics because you say oh so and so is a great player how what how do you define great player it's all subjective about whether but actually elite in any in any sport, in any business, is all to do with um, getting those getting those three things, and really, the emotional intelligence part is the biggest thing, because then that's where the magic happens. The magic happens, Gordon. I'm going to ask you a question now. When you've a bit like uh, Lionel Messi, you you're left footed. You get the ball. Do you know exactly how you're going to beat your fullback or the or the or the centre back or the midfield player that's come? You've got three people there. Do you know exactly before you get the ball how you're going to beat them? Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, I would well, have some some plan in my mind prior to that what I wanted to do with the ball. But then, when you when you actually carry it out, that's dependent on what the defenders in front of you do, because you don't know you've you've got a plan because you surprise they're going to come. But if they do something different, you yeah. will you will respond to it instantaneously if you are what we would call in flow or in the zone. If you're in flow, which is what elite athletes are, if you're in flow, you respond to that instinctively in the moment. So if the if the guy um, channels you a, a different way than you thought he was going to do, or he's on the a di they set up differently, it, uh, then you will do something differently to counteract that in the moment. And that's what elite or great players do. Because they will they will respond appropriately. A great um, co quote from the man himself, we're talking about elite, so I think a guy named Pele would kind of fit into that mould. However you define elite, Pele is going to be one of those. He's going to be an elite footballer up there with uh, Georgie Best, Maradona, etc. So Pele said once um, when he was interviewed after a game and there wasn't the, the amount of TV and coverage and everything that there is now, but they had the coverage of the game. And they said, well, could you talk us through how you actually scored that brilliant goal? He picked it up just bet on the halfway line, gone past three or four of the opposition players as if they weren't there and scored a great goal. And they said, well, how did you get past so-and-so? And, -so? and he, he said, well, I imagined that I was with the ball, the other side of the defender. I can't remember how I did it. He just knew where he wanted to get. And he said, and they showed him the, the TV replay. And what he'd done, he'd knocked the ball through the one side of the guy, gone the and went round the other side and picked it up and then went on, beat another guy, I think nutmeg somebody, and then uh, slotted it past the keeper. And uh, he said, I can't remember how I, all I knew is that I was going to be the other side of the defender. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I yeah. just did it in yeah. the moment. Would, would you would you then call that, what I call it, is, is third, fourth and fifth thought football, where... where I knew what I wanted to do four moves ahead of what I what what was what was there. The ball came across. I knew that I wanted to be able to get past that defender and I was going to hit it or I was going to cross it or I was going to volley it or whatever. I call that in the game when I'm teaching. I call it first, second, third. The first thought is to control the ball. Second thought was, OK, we may pass it. But then I look at saying, well, OK, when I, I've already gone the first and the second and the third. I'm looking now at the fourth. And like you've just said, when that situation changes and the defender ch shows me one way or the other, I can react to it. But I've still got that third and fourth football or that third, uh, the third and fourth and fifth. The top players, the elite players, they think four or five moves ahead of what they're actually actually going to do. And then you said to me then, I didn't know how I I didn't know how to I didn't know how to explain to do it. I couldn't tell you how I did it. I just did it. Exactly. But that's what it, it that's where you come to. The elite players have the ability to do that because they're in the moment. Elite players always have that extra bit of time because they're always what you would call in flow or in the zone or present. Um, what elite um, performers, whether that be cricketers, cigar field sobers, always has that extra split second to, to make a shot, to play the, play the ball. So what I'm asking, what I'm asking you then, and, and I know John wants to ask us a question. You'd say that in, say for instance, the the NFL, uh, the, the 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 top players, the elite players, all know what they're doing prior to actually getting the ball, 
or uh, and doing something four or five moves down the road elite players in um you're talking about you talk um, american football <laughs> is a series of 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 um set plays so to speak but yeah. in between that they will do th they have the ability to do things off the cuff depending on what the the defense does or oh, on the yeah. and a good defender will have the ability to react to what the the offensive team do even if he thinks he knows what they're going to do and they try they do right. something different your top players will will get it that split second quicker than your ordinary your your ordinary yeah. very good very good player and that's yeah. what that's the difference between yeah. um, elite players in any sport, whether it be American football, soccer, um, or anything, basketball, baseball. What I'm thinking, guys, and I know Gordon's got his soccer academy that is launching over in America. I'm thinking, obviously, the whole subject of elite covers all sports. So, do you believe we can learn from other sports? And if so, how will that help the young players that you're going to be recruiting? To your soccer academy gordon you can i mean the the the, the question comes up as well at uh, the do do they concentrate on just one sport or do you let them play several sports to 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 get the feel of another sport are are they good enough to play that other sport um sometimes when you get a young kid here especially in the us you've got a young player that might be good at baseball football uh, soccer uh, and and that, and it and it is very committed you know those those people are very committed to their training to bits and pieces and so in England we you pretty well much that you're looking at that player as it wants to be a footballer there's there's not that what I look at here is is that they've got a lot of options to do other sports and to see what they like but I still think that that what Mel was explaining to us then about that player or person being able to adapt very, very quickly or react to something very quickly is is in that elite world. When you're starting out in any sport, I guess you're not thinking about being elite. You just want to be successful. So I'm wondering, Correct. Gordon, when do you think your students at your soccer academy are going to be thinking about being elite? Or they're not really going to talk or think about that until they reach the top end of their sport and become more established. It, a very good question, John. Because in the US, most of the kids that are playing the game look at going to college and playing uh, playing soccer at college. So th th you know that is not elitism. That is general. That is the norm for somebody if they're in a sport like this to go and play for, to say, for instance, till they're 17, 18 years of age, and then look at a college. So it's not elite, it's they're searching for something. The the, the eliteness for me comes when when they they, they, they become a professional and, and now they're searching for another level and another, and then they're searching for the the national level and, and playing in their top leagues. Um, I, it's a good question that some I I can't answer really because uh, elite is elite starts a little bit to me a little bit older as a bit the younger one is yes it's we call this developing into a an, into a, an elite player rather than just say well he's an elite player you know because there's so much learning with the young kids and the developing of the young kids then when he's actually done it and he's got into it for me he's now an elite player he's reached the top of his game do you think it's a word we use too often then in sport because i know when i'm talking or writing about sport to be honest the word elite is something i use nearly every single time i write a report or film a video blog mainly because i'm talking about the professional game i suppose it's certainly a word that's easy to use and we use it a lot in the modern world. So do you think it's being overused? Well, there are lots of words that can be overused, such as great, great player, um, you know, top quality. Um, and elite comes into that um, 
you know, certainly in that bracket. But it, 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 again, everything is subjective. What one person think, uh, uh, considers a player gr so-called great um, or le the other one is legend. Oh, he's a legend. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, I actually had one, um, one reporter... Um, one of one of the fans actually said, "Oh, we've got Wolves legend Mel Eves. and one of the reporters actually said, "Oh, we wouldn't class Mel as a legend." And I'm going, "Well, you're, that's <laughs> that's your." I, said, I actually said to the, the 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 guy there, you know, and I said, "Well, it's all subjective." I said, "If the fan says he considers me a legend, that's the fan's subjective point of view. You obviously yeah. disagree. And and base and I actually said to the to the reporter, I agree with you. I wouldn't class myself as a legend because I'm a fan yeah. as well. Yeah. So I said, but it's it's down to somebody else. If somebody else thinks um, some player that's played 50, 50 games for his team that he's seen that he he thinks he's a wonderful player, that's that's down to the fan. That's it's, yeah. so it, it's all, but if because there is no what you would call um, dictionary definition of what an elite means, what you'll see in the dictionary, I would say, was was obviously it's is top draw. It, it's at the top of some top of your group profession or the top of your group. Uh, of, yeah. uh, so that's all it is. So if somebody's at the top of their group. They're playing at the top level. We both played at the top level, um, you know, in the Premier League as it is now. So we we would be classed as that's would be classed as elite in most people's books. And so yeah, you think, well, and, that's, and the, the, that's that's the elite level. It's like the, the you know, if you you play in the Super Bowl or you play whatever, that's an elite. That's the elite level, isn't it? Yes, yeah. If you if you play at the if you play in the NFL, if you play in the NBA, that's an elite level of the sport. If you yeah. play in the if you yeah, and I think what happens is people say, well, okay, fine, we'll get a league that is called elite. Is it for players that are elite, or is it just a name? Everybody says, oh, it's an elite league that we established. It was the same when we changed over from Division One, Two, Three, and Four, and everybody said, I tell you what. Why don't we call it the Premier? And the names are bandied about like like nobody's business. And I see it a lot in the states where 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 leagues are the elite league, you know, the the extra special league, the Premier League, uh, and and really they're, they're 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 just ordinary leagues. But the name is like you said, is superficial. A lot of it. A lot of it, Gordon. You've just you've just nailed it on the head. A lot of it is marketing, so it's absolutely it's, 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 it's basically marketing, and sometimes it's a little bit naughty, so to speak, in that it's it's marketing to kids and to parents to say yes, oh, my, this this is the elite um, under under fourteens league in the area, yeah. and you just call you you because there's nobody stopping you calling yourself the elite league no that's right or you say this is an elite program and you yes say, okay fine please tell me define the elite program for me <laughs> it's it's so it's so mind-boggling that you get we get caught up in it and so when i get people saying well he's an elite coach okay fine he's a define elite What's he doing here then? If he's elite, he should be with the top. He should be at the top with the top. And and yeah. and you scratch your head. It's, I scratch my head all the time. So if they say yes, I'm I'm a developer. I understand. Yes, you develop players, but as well, he's an elite coach. Why? Because you say so. What about somebody else? They might say, well, he's he's an ordinary coach. So it's in the eye of the beholder how they use that word. And I find it, you know, well, he's an elite player. And Mel and myself may look at that player and say, he's, what's elite about him? You know, so it's, it's really comes back to opinions. And, you know, he's a great player. He's a great player. 
well, you played in Division One, which weren't as good. Hold on a minute. Division One is as good as the top premiership teams in today. They're the same teams, except you called them something different. You said, well, it's the elite league now. Oh, okay, fine, right. And now you're scratching your head all the time because they're not elite players that are in that league. There is better. There is a better league. There's better players. So that's what I'm trying to get at. Is roughly saying that loosely used is the word elite. It, and well, that's the right. Younger you that's are, right. I don't. Yeah. That's right, Gordon. You know, there, there is no pe people can hijack the word um, for their own uses. When if we talk. As former players that have played at the top level, um, then we we understand when we say uh, when we talk about elite. But somebody else talking about elite, they they can only have a subject. It's not the thing is about talking about elite or is somebody great or or so and so is a legend. It's very subjective. It's not objective. Yeah. So. There aren't any definitions around. Well, yeah, the, 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 you, I, I totally agree. It's just totally, totally it's agree. just totally somebody's opinion, and and that's down. And so, somebody's opinion is based on obviously their beliefs and everything, and their life experiences and everything else. Which one yes. person's could be totally different to another person. Guys, a little later, we're going to talk about who the role models are when we define elite players at the top end. Meantime, I know in your case in particular, Gordon, you're constantly under pressure to call young players elite because over in America, you have a system of pay to play. And consequently, there's an obsession with labeling players elite as soon as possible. So how do you cope with that? I look at it and, and it leaves you scratching your head because you say, well, is it elite? It brings into perspective the standard that you're looking at and the players that you're looking at. And, uh, uh, you know, you say a young kid, I tell you what, he could be an elite player. You try not to use that because that is, if you're look, using that word and an elite player, he could be, he, he could not materialize. He may not mature into that. And you say, he's an elite. I said, well, he was, the coach said he's an elite player. Yet well, this, you get this, this this is where on, this, this is where I think you've nailed it on the head, Gordon, as you usually do, is that coaches have a responsibility to to not be too over the top with their comments about young players. If they say somebody's an elite player and then doesn't go on to make it, because if if the kid himself or the kid's parents or somebody around the the young player hears that and that gets back to the young player. They think, oh well, I've already made it. I don't. There's not too much to do. Whereas, whereas what they should be saying is, look, if he carries on improving and keeps working at his game, he's got a chance. He's got a chance of making a, a pro, or he's got a chance of playing, yes. you know, at a, a really good, a really good level in the game. And that's that is that that is a massive, massive responsibility for all coaches. And I know you're, you know, you're a top coach you've been around a long time like myself and i think for younger coaches in the game or even parents or anybody yes. connected anybody connected that's in in the environment around young players there shouldn't be uh they shouldn't be calling somebody oh elite whatever you they should be talking about you're a real you've got a really good chance of progressing if you if if you want but you've got to keep focused um, and you've you've got to keep learning the game. How, how, in my opinion, however good they are. Yeah, at no, that, I I, at that I, age. I I I agree with you. I, I put my my word elite into another word, which is develop. If yeah. I if you if I say to a you know he's an elite player, I said no, he's a player that needs to be developed that could become a top player that could exactly. stand in with the best of them. And once he actually achieves that, then he became an elite player then. But I I, I think that the, 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 the word banded about elite is that 
I always like to use, they're on to the next stage of being developed, which will turn them into an elite player at the end of the day. But he cannot become that elite player by us just saying that. It has to be developed stage by stage, step by step, until, until he's at the top, playing in whatever league, the top league, and then people are going to turn around and, th and they're going to label him and you're going to go, yeah, he deserved it. He worked it hard to become an elite player, to become an elite player. He wasn't classed as an elite player growing through. Or it's not an elite league when you've got another top league at the top of that. And it's I, I agree with you 100%. It's the marketing of the word elite. Yeah. And... and I think that's the be the best message for any anybody, obviously younger coaches or uh, players um, listening or watching watching this um, interview is always look to adopt the um, the Japanese model of what you would call kaizen or kaizen, never ending improvement. Always be looking. How can I do this better? How can I be a better yes. player? What do I need to do? And I'm looking in every aspect. Can I improve? Can I improve my uh, physicality? Do I need to do more in the gym, or do I need to do more running on the track? Do I need? Do uh, am I am I eating and drinking the right things to get the best out so of me? So that really day? now. So that yep. really is what you're saying comes into the four. Uh, categories that that are being taught technically tactically physically and the biggest one that you're you're doing and your business is now psychologically psychologically yep. now and and we can help with the three first ones which is the technical we can help that we can tactically give them that we can we can get them fit no problem but we cannot give them what we're talking about to today is about the elitism we cannot give you that without everything else underneath going, it's uh, dropping into place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, um, you, you, you and I could still play. Yeah. Um, now, if we'd got all the other stuff, we would got the fit, the physic, the physicality and everything. Yes. Because obviously on the last thing, thinking like an elite player, we still think like that now, but the problem is, we yes. Are, uh, it's a uh, the the vehicle that we we're running around in doesn't move as quick as it used to, does it? <laughs> it's 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 the, <laughs> it's the same old story, Mel. You know, the brain <laughs> says go, and the body says woo. Well, the, the body says hold on, well, hold on, hold uh, on a minute. You, you, you know, have you looked? At so, you look, I'm not, it's not in the same. It's not in the same condition as it used to be. It's no, it, no. I'm afraid, yeah. Guys, I'm guessing once you've reached an elite level, the characteristics and the discipline you've learned become second nature. And it's then a mindset you never lose, which I'm thinking is part of what Mel is teaching. So, Gordon, I understand entirely why you really wanted Mel on the show tonight. I can thank you, Mel, for, 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 for you know, um, defining and helping us to be able to to. to put the word or define the word elite and maybe put it into the right perspective in the developing of young players and older players that, that, that now uh, may not be as fit, but can still use the, they've got the drive, but they, the, the, they, the, the body won't do it, but they're still thinking the brain still thinking about being two seconds ahead, as opposed to being, you know, behind the eight ball. And I, all I can do is to you is to say, thank you very much for, for, for this. And uh, I will be talking to you and I will be using you a lot more in, in the progress because the U S is full of it now where they, they need people like yourself. That's experienced. They need people like myself that have been there, done it, seen it. And we've got the pitfalls. And then basically what they're doing is they're turning around and saying, okay, he's a legend or a legend or, or, or something else. It boils down to the opinion of that person. And I think, you know, when we use the word elite, it sometimes can fall into that bracket. Yeah, I think that's a great, great point, Gordon. Um, all of this is my just take on, take on it. It's my opinion. 
um, and it'll be your your opinion. But the big the big takeaway that I, I think is, irrespective of what we think, always take the view: how is this going to impact on a young person's career? Are yes. we doing? Are we as coaches or parents or or somebody that's giving uh, some information to young players um, to f for their um, for their progression? Is this is this the right thing that they should be hearing? Is this going yeah. is this going to is this going to benefit them or hold them back? And I think that some of them thinking that they're already elite. Yes. At too young an age will hold them back because the ego gets involved instead of just because the the elite players and I've met so many elite players as you as you have obviously Gordon and when we talk with elite players they're so humble and it's not a case of oh sorry do you know who I am no that, I totally agree you and I will have seen so many extremely gifted and talented players. Yes. Don't make it. Don't no, make it. That's exactly. That's exactly. Yeah. There's some, some uh, part of their ingredients is missing. And, and that will be virtually always on the, the emotional intelligence side or the, in other words, yeah. or, um, It'll, or it'll be hey, do they want it enough? Are they willing to? Are they willing to? Are they willing to get knocked down, and get up again, and get up again? Yeah, get up. Because champ, champions, it's not a case of how many times you get knocked down. Yes, it's, yes, exactly. It's if you can get up one, t you know, one time more than you get than you get knocked down, then you're a champion. Yes, but, but yeah. But people that don't people that don't make the most of their ability don't make it to the top of their ability. Um, give give they they usually give in too early or they give in and it's say, the same word, Mel. I don't want it's it. The same I don't word, want Mel, it. As, as I don't want it. It's like when somebody I don't want when somebody enough. tries. Yes, when somebody tries, that to me they're caught. They're a trier. And then and people says, "Well, you tried, you failed." Then, I, to me, that that word doesn't come into it. You're not a failure if you keep trying. You're a trier. You're a trier. Yeah. And, and people say, "Oh, he's been a failure. He's a failure. He's a failure." Well, what does that send the message to the player? That everything he does then becomes, and your development, a young player. Oh, he's a failure. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Calm down. The word failure is more damaging than you can possibly imagine. Now we're talking about the word elite that can be as much damaging as the word failure because parents will say, oh, well, he's an elite player. Listen, let the experts and the top developing coaches let you know if he is a player with potential as opposed to he's an elite player because there's always somebody behind you ready to step in front of you and be better. There's always somebody behind you. So you've always got to be on your toes to be able to, to get there. You've always got to be looking over your shoulder. There's always somebody that's going to be, oh, well, I've done 10. Well, I've done 12. Oh, man. So basically, when that comes into it, I, I look at all the players. I said, I won't call you a failure. I said, you, you, you can only be classed a failure if you don't even attempt to do something. If you don't... Do an exam. If you don't go out and kick a ball, if you don't go and pick up a ball, well, you're a failure because you didn't want to even get out there. You you wouldn't even give it a go. You wouldn't even try. And it's like you just said, if you don't give it a go, you will never know if you can do it. The first level of what I call in emotional intelligence is what you call the courage. You have to have the courage to do the right thing. And you have to have the courage to believe in yourself. You've got to have total belief in your own ability. Yes. And that's that's where everything comes from, because success is an inside out job. 
It's not anything to do with the outside in. It's not coaches telling you how good you are. It's not anybody else telling you that you're elite. It's no. you. There's a there's a such a fine line though, isn't there, between like you've just said, it's like I'm confident or you're cocky. Oh, and that word there's... and that and that word is so used. It's like oh, he's a cocky little. For, he'll, he'll I'll oh. watch him. He'll tell you he can do this, this, or this. It's the confidence side, and I. Th- what you've just touched on is something that happened to me when I went from Millwall to Man U. That I got Louis Macari said, Oh, here comes this cocky Londoner, you know, um, full of himself. I wasn't full of myself. I believed in what I could do. They wouldn't believe in me. I had to do it. So what you're saying really comes over well because I'm, I'm going, holy moly. And it takes me back to when I was 17, 19, when I signed for United. Exactly that. Well, uh, he's a cocky Londoner. No, I wasn't cocky. I was confident that I could do things, but I wasn't, oh, yeah, listen, you know, oh, he's a cocky. You know, it's funny that. It's, yeah. Did they say cocky or cockney? Anyway, the other one is that <laughs> no, no. <laughs> there's, a di- there's a difference between um confidence and arrogance nobody likes yes. an arrogant so and so well that's but exactly that's exactly the word I, I was looking for yeah but everybody loves somebody who's confident in themselves and they're that are comfortable in their own skin um yeah but doesn't but doesn't um get arrogant about it and kind of push Throw it onto it people. The face yeah, throw it in they their just, faces. They just, when they need to, do it. And and that's not yeah. that's not in in the dressing room. You just have the banter. Where, yeah. but on the pitch, that's when in the right um, environment, that's when you actually perform, and that's yes. when you show that you are confident. But also, you have to be confident that if if the manager comes in or one of the players says. Oh. <laughs> you got the big call. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that, John. <laughs> no problem. It's been fascinating listening to both of you tonight. I'd just like to ask you a final question. I wonder if you can both, each in uh, turn, give an example, maybe one or two examples of a professional sportsman, either current or from the past, who you would say is a good role model when it comes to talking about being an elite athlete. Gordon, I think you've already got someone in mind. So if we can start with you, Gordon, maybe you can talk about one sportsman who you think is a great example of being an elite performer and why they are a good example. Yeah, I think a great example for me um, in present day would be Marcus Rashford for um, the drive, the 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 keeping his feet on the ground, him listening, doing what he wants, doing it, doing what he's told, um, and then and then going out and doing it, and not being like Mel and I were talking about, not being overconfident, but confident enough to produce what he was doing on the field. Um, I you know he is one that really would stand out for me. Um, and the other one would be Lewis Hamilton, who I think um, is the top of the tree when it comes to, OK, he he sets his own standards. He doesn't ask people to set them for him. It's the same as Marcus, Marcus Rashford. They don't ask you to set the bar. They set their bar and they go for the bar. And if it, if they need to get higher they will push that bar they will push it to the actual that to me is elite that to me is the top that is the 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 the, the creme de la creme the elite they they're going through it they, they marcus has got he's doing it he's producing it but he's producing it without making a song and dance about it and like we talked about he's not in your face but he's doing it the right way so those two there would be my uh, my great examples, Lewis Hamilton and Marcus Rashford. That's brilliant, Gordon. So, Mel, it's your turn. Who would you like to throw into the hat? Well, I can throw 
a former Manchester United player um, who's now playing it for Juventus, Ronaldo, because um, he's carried on uh, improving and he's well into his 30s now, but he's looked after himself. He is one of the best players that the game's ever seen. And um, his atti your attitude determines your altitude. And I think his attitude has been first class. Obviously, in his, in his earlier days at Manchester United, Sir Alex Ferguson had to, had to, had to jump in when he was doing too many, too many step overs. But he listened to that. And it's not, it's not making mistakes. It's always looking to improve your game. And he's fine-tuned and fine-tuned. And now if you watch him play, um, he, when, he gets, when he gets involved in a game, everything that he does produces a result. So he might only have two or three involvements in a game and he'll score, he'll score, he'll score two goals and make one. And everybody will look and go, well, well he didn't actually do that much. Well, just look at the score sheet. We've won three nil. He's got two, and he made the other one. And you're thinking, well, how did he do that? Because he's always thinking three, four, five, like a, a master five D chess player. And and that's why um, you. I don't think you're ever elite until you've you've played. We always say, well, when you've played a hundred game, when you played a hundred first team games, um, come back to me, and we'll have a look again. Well, what a great discussion. It's been an absolute pleasure listening to these two experts talk about what it means to be an elite athlete. I hope you've enjoyed it at home. And if you've liked what you've seen, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and please join us again next time. Meantime, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Gordon, a big thank you to Mel, and a big thank you for watching. That's all for now, folks. See you again next time. Bye for now.